Hey everyone! Happy Sunday! Welcome back to our third week of Sunday School videos. So we're going to spend a little bit of time reviewing the Apostles' Creed. If you remember, a creed is a statement of belief. Now the Apostles' Creed is split into three parts, one part for each member of the Trinity. The past two weeks we've been talking about God the Father, the first person in the Trinity. Erica, do you remember what we talked about the first week? First week was when we studied creation. Exactly. So we learned about how God created us and how he still provides for us. Do you remember what we talked about last week? Last week was the story of Peter when he got put in prison and then the angel saved him. Yeah, God created the angels and he uses those angels to protect us on a daily basis. So now, this week, we're going to talk a little bit about how God cares for us. So, Erica, do you have any pets? I do. I have two dogs at home. What are some ways that you take care of your pets? So dogs need food and water, so we do that a couple times a day. And then you take them out for walks so they can get some exercise. Um, and one of them needs a haircut regularly. We do that. <laughs> yes. So that's fun. <laughs> How about you guys? Do you have any pets? Let's think about some ways that we take care of our pets. So let's say if you have a fish, you have to clean the tank, right? If you have a cat, you have to make sure that you give her food and water. If you have dogs, make sure they're exercised yeah. and you cut their hair. There are many different ways that we take care of our pets. Erica, what are some ways that our parents take care of us? So we also need food and stuff. They do that. Um, they drive us places when we need to get going somewhere. Uh, they pay for our school, make sure we're educated. They teach us about God. Oh, that's, that's a good <laughs> one. Yeah, our parents provide for us in so many different ways. So today, we're going to talk about how God, our Heavenly Father, cares for us. Let's start with prayer. Can you fold your hands and bow your heads? Dear Heavenly Father, open our hearts and ears so that we can listen to your word as we study today. And lead us to discover more about you as we learn what you do to take care of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So our lesson today comes from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 17, verses 8 to 14. Let's read. Okay. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. He said, Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So this woman he's staying with is a widow, which means that she was married, but then her husband died. And usually widows at that time didn't have a lot of money. Um, so what do you think was going through Elijah's head when God said, hey, go stay with this poor widow? He was probably really surprised. Of course, it was famine time and not a lot of people had much food. So he was probably surprised. Why didn't God send him to someone who was rich and had a lot more money? Instead, he sent him to a widow. Right. So this took a lot of faith from Elijah to say, like, hey, God, I trust you. So let's see what he does. Uh, then he went to Zarephath, and when he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called again and said, and please bring me a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me, and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. So that's crazy. <laughs> this widow was ready to go home and have her last meal with her son. If you were the widow, would you make food for someone else first? Would you give your last meal to a total stranger, Elijah? I don't think so. Of yeah. course, I would want to save the last bit of food that I had for me and my family. I wouldn't want to give it to somebody that I didn't even know. Right. So again, taking a lot of faith. And God says he's going to take care of her. He promises that her flour and oil aren't going to run out. So let's see what she does. She went away and did as Elijah told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word the Lord spoke through Elijah. So, as Lexi said earlier, there was a famine at this time, and that means that a lot of rain, like, or sorry, that there was not a lot of rain, and that many people <laughs> did not have food. So this is a tremendous blessing that this woman had an endless supply of food from God. So, that's an awesome way that God took care of the widow and Elijah. For sure. All right, let's keep reading. Sometime later, the son of the widow became ill. He grew worse and worse, and finally he stopped breathing. She said to Elijah, What do you have against me, man of God? Did you come to remind me of my sin and to kill my son? Give me your son, Elijah replied. 
And he took him from her and carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on the bed. Then he cried out to the Lord, Lord, my God, why have you brought tragedy even on this widow I'm staying with by causing her son to die? Then he stretched himself out over the boy three times and cried out to the Lord, Lord, my God, let this boy's life return to him. The Lord heard Elijah's cry and the boy's life returned to him and he lived. Elijah picked up the child and carried him down the stairs into the house. He gave him to his mother and he said, look, your son is alive. Then the woman said to Elijah, now I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is true. Wow. God loved the widow so much that he brought her son back to life through Elijah. God can do anything from making an endless supply of food to bringing someone back to life. God will do anything for the people that he loves. So let's talk about that lesson a little bit. Let's just review. Um, so at the beginning, God talked to Elijah and told him to go somewhere. Where did he send Elijah? Ooh, that's a hard one. Do you guys remember? It starts with a Z. Which is a weird, it was a weird one. Yes. It's a weird one. God <laughs> sent Elijah to Zarephath. Zarephath. Nice. Um, what did Elijah ask the widow to do for him? Well, first he asked for a drink of water, and then he asked for some bread, too. Yeah. What promise from God did Elijah tell the widow? He's, or God told the widow that her flour and her oil would not run out until the famine was over. What happened to the widow's son later? It's just so sad. He ended up dying. Yeah. How did Elijah help her and her son? Well, he called on God and raised the boy back to life. So ultimately in the story, who cared for Elijah? Well, through the widow, God cared for Elijah. Yeah. And who cared for the woman? God. Nice. <laughs> And who cares for us? God does. God. <laughs> All right. Our Bible words for today come from 1 Peter verses 5 and or <laughs> chapter 5 verse 7. You may recognize this verse. It is cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Anxieties. That's kind of a big word. Let's talk a little bit about what that means. So anxieties are worries or concerns that are continually on your mind. So what are some anxieties that you have? Maybe you have anxieties about your friends or your family or your grades or natural disasters. There are many things that we may have anxieties about here on earth. But did you hear what God said to do with those anxieties? He says to cast them on him. Imagine you're casting a fishing line as far away as you can or you're throwing a ball as far as you can. That's what God tells us to do with our anxieties. And why do we do that? It says, because he cares for you. God loves us, and he wants to care for us and provide for us. And what's so amazing is that he can. Not only does he want to help us, but he can help us. So, those are wonderful words. Let's work on memorizing that verse together. So, I'll say the first part twice, and then I'll have you repeat it after me. So, it starts out, cast all your anxieties on him. I'll say it one more time. Cast all your anxieties on him. All right, let's do it together. Cast all your anxieties on him. Alrighty, let's try it one more time. Cast all your anxieties on him. Ready for the next part? Because he cares for you. I'll say it again. Because he cares for you. Let's try it all together. Because he cares for you. One last time. Because he cares for you. All right, time to put it all together. So I'll say it twice all the way through. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. One more time. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. All right, everyone, get ready. We're going to say it all together. Okay. Cast, Cast all, all your anxieties, anxieties on him because he cares for you. One last time. Cast, Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Awesome job. Good work. Those are wonderful words to remember. I love it. So let's close with prayer. You can fold your hands, bow your heads. Dear God, there's nothing you can't do. Thank you for all the ways you care for us every day. And thank you especially that you sent Jesus to save us from our sins. Give us ever thankful hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Have a great week.